Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. I'm really excited because I'm in the field. I'm going to be photographing some birds and I'm with my good mate, Jan. We're at a place called Nobbies, which is on Phillip Island. And there's a tern colony here. And I just can't wait, to be honest. You've been here a few times already. Yep. You've got a couple of good shots. So I'm really keen to get some like Jan did in the previous video. We, we started this adventure yesterday. I've driven, I drove five hours. How long did it take you to get here? Well, from Queensland, a long time, but from <laughs> Melbourne, just an hour and a half. <laughs> That's right. Planned to have a session yesterday afternoon, and we did, but there were just so many people here. It's a popular tourist destination. It was New Year's Eve last night. It's New Year's Day today, so Happy New Year. It's pretty early. We got up early, and we're just ready to have some fun. But we did take lots of good shots yesterday afternoon, mainly all flight shots, both using 200-800. Um, Jan, you can see, has got the 1.4 on there. How did that work for you? Well, it works quite well with the 1.4 extender and actually amazingly well for flight shots. And it just gives me the perfect sort of range. It's wide open F13, but that wasn't a problem. It's bright enough here. And then you have 280 to 1120 millimeters. And then it just seemed like when the bird's further away, you can zoom in. When it comes closer, you can zoom out. And the only issue we sort of discounted oh, yeah. is what we said in our reviews as well. That long, stiff throw. So we're constantly winding up yeah. and down this lens. Actually, now this morning, after doing it a whole afternoon, my thumb's a little bit yeah, sore. Yeah, likewise. So... We might get RSI from... Uh, oh, there's a peregrine, peregrine falcon. Peregrine falcon coming past. But the light's coming up, and we really want to take some photos, <laughs> and we'll bring you with us this morning. I'll share some photos now of what we took yesterday afternoon. So there's peregrine falcons, there's three peregrine falcons flying around here because there's so many gulls that you can hear them. That call is the peregrine falcon. They're obviously flying around trying to get these silver gulls, just waiting for them to go. Oh. I was a bit too far away when it was banking around. I must admit, it's, it's, it, it can be a struggle to find the subject and then zoom in. Had a bit of fun with the peregrines when I go down to the turns. All right, so we're here. There's the turn colony right here. It's not as big as it was, what, a few weeks ago? There's a lot less Probably birds here. A third here. now or something. A third of them, yeah. So there's a few babies here. The hard part is just trying to get the chick, I suppose, the baby and the adult together, isolated with a nice back. It's very difficult, so it's just a Well, because it's all this short trampled grass where they're nesting in, so you have to get one that's more on the edge to get a good shot. Now we're going to do the turns and again find a nice blue ocean background and then get them mid-bank and get some awesome shots with a fish. Yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> right. So that was pretty good. Already nailed the flight shot with the first try. Did you? <laughs> so that was pretty good. Look, another bird oh, nice. up on the left. Oh, that baby's more isolated now. Yeah, for flight shots it's better to stand up, but as you can see Dwight in the background, to get the babies you want to be as low as possible. And we're on this ball walk already, so that's not ideal, but going as low as possible will give us a better angle. Pretty nice line.
the, the key is just adapting to what you see, I suppose, and having a friend with you helps because they can alert you to something that you haven't seen. So uh, just constantly, we see we're not really moving, we're just staying in the one spot, um, laying down when we need to to get a lower angle and just having a bit of fun. <laughs> Stay on that one, I reckon I'm just gonna do another one. Following around, around. Do this famous. So we just had a um, crested turn with a fish. Sometimes they can't find their babies, so they do laps. So knowing that Jan and I followed it around, and, oh, it's come. So if you know where it's coming, you can just track it and your odds of getting a shot are much, much higher. So hopefully we got one. There's a mum and the baby sleeping together with the wing under the wing. We need to bet if that baby sticks her head up, we get a very cute shot. There we go, there's a little bit of eye. It's the problem when you don't have a battery grip is your battery, you know, only lasts you a few hours, especially if you're going hard out. We are using fairly high shutter speeds because we don't know what the action that's going to happen. That 1120 millimeter focal length enables you to get these, you know, nice tight shots, head shots, uh, and we don't even have to leave this boardwalk, which is excellent. There's a few sort of babies in this area, but yeah. oh, there's that baby in the grass. There's quite big, and I'm just zooming right in on it just to isolate it. This is the challenge as well, there's so much happening and then there's one <laughs> shot that you know would be the best shot but then you always do something else and then you yeah, miss yeah. it half the time. All right, so we just stopped because we both just got awesome shots. Jan, you want to explain what just happened? Well, we were photographing that little baby under the mum's wing and then I suddenly spotted one baby more out in the open and we zoomed into it, it was beautiful, but then this seagull started to, or silver gull I shall say, started to attack the mum and because we had the zoom lens we we're actually able to zoom out far enough and get the action of the with the mum with the baby and the seagull kind of swooping them so that was pretty awesome and another reason why in a spot like this a zoom lens really is worth prime would be hopeless anything the prime just wouldn't work here because you just can't zoom in and out but that action is what it's all about like I was to be honest I've struggled a bit this morning just to get the exact shot but if you put in the time you take the photos you often get the results and that was what happened there but it's because this is so overwhelming that's what I yes. said in the beginning as well you're on the baby then you see something else you're on the other baby then you miss the first baby then you miss the second baby then you miss the flight shot so it's almost like you have to spot the best scene yes. and then stick with the scene. Like with that just then, we had the baby, that was good. Yep, yep. And then the gull came in, made it oh. even better. Yeah, if you had right. gone back to the first baby, you probably missed that one and the other one. So it's yeah. really about picking your subject and sticking with it. Where the mirrorless cameras make so much sense as well, because you see, I saw the first shots, it was too bright. So I could yep. quickly change my shutter speed. Yeah, your battery's dead. <laughs> had a little scare. <laughs> a little bit of a scare. The battery died as we were recording. And we thought for a minute we'd lost the entire morning shoot. Only an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, that would have been awful. But thankfully it was there after a short panic. So um, that's just part of YouTubing, I suppose. It would have been annoying if we'd lost all that. Devastating might be the word. If you just lose the whole morning session, there's a wallaby hopping around as well. And you see us turning around all the time, but it's because <laughs> here you get a bit ADHD. It's like you think you always miss something amazing the moment you turn your back to the colony. But I think it just shows we're photographers first and then YouTubers second, perhaps. We can't, well, 
for me. <laughs> no, for sure. Like you don't want to miss the moment because you're kind of talking to the camera, but you yeah. also want to talk to the camera in the good moment. So yeah. you're really like torn like that. Yeah, you're like, like oh, yo -yo. quickly look to the camera, look back there. So what are we going to do now? Well, there's a couple babies up on the hill. Oh yeah. Somewhere there now out in the open. So to get the best angle, we've got to lay really low. And unfortunately, we've got to lay on this hard timber. It's hard on the body, but it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, makes all the difference. Just getting that different angle and the better backgrounds, that's for sure. This is how you spend a New Year's Day, is out with your mate, photographing birds. Just incredible. Oh, there's one with a fish right in front of us. So we're just doing some flight shots because the birds are coming up and then coming this way and just trying to... <laughs> Speaking about coming up, eh? oh. <laughs> It's hard. So we've got the right light angle now, it's sort of coming directly this way as the birds are flying towards us and they've got obviously got fish in their mouths. Well, Drake's doing some flight shots. I think what's nice here as well is that you can build a nice portfolio really quickly. And I think it's important as well that you don't just take one kind of image, like only flight shot. What's nice here that you can get some nice flight shots, some silhouettes at night. You get some shots with the babies, you can zoom into the babies with the parents. So no, really short amount of time you can actually build up a really nice set of images. It's kind of the perfect spot for bird and flight. It's just unreal. Well, if you want to fill up an unholy amount of memory cards <laughs> really quickly, you definitely can come here. It's pretty incredible how fast this lens focuses, even with the 1.4 extender. Like, you zoom past, you think you don't get the shot, but you actually seem to get it. So I've just noticed that occasionally the turns will bank this way, flying around the back of us, and then they bank, and we're just trying... Some geese. Some geese. And so I'm trying to get a, a shot of it banking as it's going across here. This is what I'm working towards. Almost too much focal length when they bank this way, but... Mm. We're almost at the sea. Watch this one. Oh no, didn't do it. Oh yeah, there we go. Got it. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice if you'd got that. But that's just a matter of waiting for them to come around and then they... I did, it was pretty good. You got it? Yeah. It's a bit dark, but... Oh, <laughs> how good's that? <laughs> just click your fingers and it happens. That's it. Skill, all oh, skill. So it's just about figuring out those little things isn't it it's just identifying i think that's the key is to identify the possible shots like you can like you were saying if you just stay on one thing the whole time you're not going to get a portfolio if you can change up the different style of shots that you're taking i guess it just comes with time doesn't it i suppose and trial and error i guess because we take lots of bad shots like yeah, well <laughs> no, i do <laughs> oh dear it's just learning which ones are good and which ones aren't, I suppose. There's a Cape Barren goose just down here that's been eating lots of berries, and the berries are red, and it's got it all over its face, so I might just get a headshot. Wow, you can really, the 12, 1120 is crazy, isn't it? Yeah, but can you see how their nostrils are always full of dirt as well? Oh, I don't yeah. even know how they breathe. Why it's going a bit crazy now. He got out the two times extender on the 200 to 800, getting a pretty close up shot. So I've just got the two times, and we're photographing this Cape Barren goose. I'm at f18, which is crazy. And obviously, our AF box is actually smaller, but I've never tried the two times. This is the first time, so I'll be interested to see if they're sharp or not. 
F18, we've obviously got plenty of light at the moment, so light's not an issue, but that'll be interesting to see because that's crazy amount of focal length. What's that? 1600 uh, millimeters. <laughs> okay, so our session's almost come to an end. The sun's getting a little bit high, there's a bit of heat haze. We've taken thousands of shots this morning. I've had an amazing time. How about you? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Like you don't want to stop even when the light's getting harsh. You just want to go because there's so much action, but we definitely filled up the carts. I'm almost at 5,000 photos now. Yeah. Right, it's at 35,000. <laughs> oh, well, you know, just take, having fun, just taking photos is what it's all about, obviously. And if we've got a few good ones, so be it. But it's just, I'm sure we do. I'm sure we do. It'd be embarrassing if we do. Yeah, 100%. But how did it perform overall? Well, really good. I'm surprised how well the autofocus works, even with the 1.4 extender, it's nice and fast. You, definitely get a majority of sharp shots not yep. everything but Agreed. it locks on really well it locks on better to the gulls than to the peregrine yes, falcon so yep. the white color that contrast between the blue and the white definitely helps it 100%. but it's yep. doing well overall i think one thing we saw there's a little bit of like chromatic aberrations yeah. on some of the gulls against the darker backgrounds especially yep. but overall i think we're pretty happy yeah 100 percent and uh you know, we've, we've been hand holding for what, nearly two and a half hours and my arms are getting sore, but we've been able to do it without issues. So weight's not a real problem, is it's it? It's doable, but yeah. heavy. And yeah, my fingers almost have like imprints from this. Oh, they do. From this um, man oh, zoom I ring. I can't see them. Because <laughs> it's pretty stiff, so you do have to go hard at it. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed the session. We don't get to do this very often, so it's always fun when we do. So thanks yeah, for, for sure. inviting me down and having this session. So uh, hopefully it happens again soon. But yeah. uh, obviously check out Jan's channel if you haven't been to his channel. Um, appreciate you watching this. Obviously thumbs up, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. So until the next one, take care. Happy birding. See ya. See ya. Let's get another shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>